I'm Elizabeth Trithart, an artist and engineer. I lead a double life. By day, I troubleshoot cloud software, and by night, I weave exquisite fabrics on my hand looms. Before I can weave, I must first build my loom from pieces of wood and string. An idea for a textile can come from many sources. One of my favorites are historic textiles. This is a profile draft that inspired me. On this page, there's enough information for a weaver to recreate the design the draft author Mary Meggs Atwater called a recipe. This was one of my first weaving math problems to solve. The recipe calls for 1,700 threads. My loom has only 8 shafts and is 24 inches wide. My reed measures 12 dents per inch. After solving an equation for scaling the design, I was able to weave this pattern. I followed the guide for a double weave cloth and used a pickup technique. The weaving was slow. I was able to reproduce most of the pattern. The sample is the size of a placemat, just large enough to be a coverlet for a doll. I need a bigger loom. After a couple of years, I stepped up to a 24 shaft computer dobby loom. One of the first projects was to return to the recipe and see if I could weave it on this loom. I wrote the draft using a computer program, threaded the loom, turned on the computer, listened to the click-clack of the solenoid test. Out of the loom came this coverlet woven 50 inches wide. I noticed right away that the proportion was off. Why was it elongated? I had much to learn about set in the choice of weft yarns and how they impact the squareness of the pattern. While I had a usable throw, I did not have a full copy of the original design. As I was learning about weaving, I traveled around the country taking classes and eventually purchased this loom I named Queen Esmeralda. She's a draw loom from Sweden, over 12 feet long and 6 feet wide. It took weeks to assemble and dress her for weaving for my next attempt at reproducing the recipe draft. Finally, I was able to reproduce the entire draft in a six-shaft satin weave. The pattern required the use of 75 patterned shafts. This is how the weaver intended the design to look. As an added bonus, I discovered and corrected an error in the original profile draft. In 2006, I was able to travel to Florence, Italy to finish my BFA in Studio Arts. I studied jacquard loom silk weaving. It was there I discovered my passion was for the draw loom, which existed just prior to the jacquard loom being invented. I had also learned that I, had I lived 200 years ago, I would have been a damask weaver. In Damask, each change in the reflection of light is caused by a change in weave structure. The properties of a Damask fabric are that it's reversible and it can be woven with a single shuttle. It took me a few days to design it on the computer, but almost a whole week to punch the cards by hand and string them. A big part of learning to weave is to master drafting theory. Drafting is an elegant graphic form of applied mathematics in which a weaver determines which threads will appear on the top of the cloth. The guiding rule for this draft is that no weft thread may rise above the surface more than five blocks. Weavers make use of symmetry to reduce the number of shafts required to weave a pattern. There are a number of computer programs written to assist the weaver in making a draft. Many are written using Java and C Sharp. In this image, you can see I use symmetry in the form of a point threading across the top and point treadlings down to the right. The tie-up is symmetrical and reversed and is placed in the upper right-hand corner. There are times in weaving that I have a completely different starting point in the design process. The challenge I had for this image was to create a draft that could be woven on a commercial loom in a weaving mill. My source for the design was a watercolor that I had made. It was inspired by the tiles that I had found in Florence. I developed a number of thread blocks that I could use to mix my four chosen threads of blue, yellow, white, and red. I needed to make use of my knowledge of Photoshop for handling the original watercolor image without distortion. I used jacquard weaving software and the resulting piece of cloth was sent to me from the mill almost a month later. When planning any warp, 
I need to calculate the length and number of threads. Plan for something called take up, loom waste, and shrinkage in the wet finishing process. While warping, I must count carefully and develop a cross to keep threads in order. I use a warping chain to prevent tangling when moving the warp from the warping board to the loom. The origin of this draft is likely unknown. The copy I found was discovered in a historic weaver's draft book. Jacob Angstadt was a weaver in Pennsylvania in the late 1700s. The design features motifs of a snowball and wig roses. My goal is to develop a contemporary version of this draft that can be woven on a simpler loom. One of the things needed to make the transformation to an 8-shaft loom is that I needed a ground structure that uses only two shafts. Here there are several iterations I made while designing the draft and weaving samples to see if my theory works. To me, creating a draft is developing a mathematical theory. The actual weaving of cloth is the proof. My sampling efforts resulted in this design. I used the snowballs, created new borders, and a new center with an open space between. The resulting cloth is durable enough to use in a garment, yet soft to the touch and drapable. I'll be using this cloth to design a jacket to be used in a fashion show next year at Handweavers Guild of America's Convergence Gathering. Looking at this image, you can see the cherries and the leaf blocks I used as the basis of the damask weaving earlier. There's a combination of three sets of symmetrical blocks in my relief wood block print. The shared symmetry points place the blocks in harmony with one another. I use this design as a starting point for a final computer jacquard weaving project. I've been happily weaving since 1991 and it's taken me on trips around the country and the world. Weaving is a lifelong learning experience embracing both past and the future. When weaving is taught in the proper context, weaving includes science to use theory and proof methodology, technology where mechanical and technical skills are embedded, engineering in material design and construction skills which are learned, art in creating beauty in form and color have become essential. Math, every step of the way, mathematics are used to control and predict the outcome. Weaving is so hot, it's steam.